All the creepy crawlies are coming out. All of the baby spiders are coming out. In this video, in our homeschooling series using OneNote, I wanted to talk to you about unit studies. I've got spiders on the brain because all of the baby spiders around my house are starting to hatch out and I love spiders. So I want to share with you today my unit study for elementary school kids, especially young kids, on spiders. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And today, I'm putting on my teacher hat, and I wanted to share with you some more in our series on using OneNote for schooling. In particular for homeschooling, but it would work for any kind of schooling that you're doing, whether you're a teacher in a uh, public school or private school, all of those things apply. So I just wanted to share with you today uh, a little bit on unit studies. Now unit studies is simply taking a theme and building out all of these learning activities around that theme. Let's jump into OneNote and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I know it's probably a little early for spiders for some, or it may be a subject that some of you don't like to talk about, but spiders are very critical and important creatures in our world. And I think it's always important to teach children how very important spiders are. The fact that they eat so many other insects is just a wonderful thing. So let's get into it. You see here on my screen that I am in a notebook that is a shared notebook between myself and another educator. And this is a notebook where we can share information, strategies, uh, information on different projects that we're working on, different units that we're working on. So anytime we want to share something with each other, we throw it in this notebook and then the other person knows to go there and look for it. For this particular video, I wanted to talk about this section here called unit studies. The first page that I put in this section is on spiders, and that's going to be our primary focus today. When you're doing unit studies for elementary students, um, there are some things that you want to keep in mind. In order to engage the students in the learning, I always wanted to do units that were based on the kids' interests or things that were happening in the world, uh, holidays that were occurring, field trips that we might have planned, different seasons that were coming up, uh, anything like that, just to really have something for them to connect it to. So, in this case, we did a study on spiders, of course, in October. And one thing that I always make sure that I do for unit studies is I make sure that they are literature based. Even though the spiders unit is primarily a science unit, because we are focusing on the anatomy of spiders and how they live and how they have babies and what they do for us in the world, we also want to have some fun with it. So um, starting with a good story that's engaging for the kids really provides a hook and helps hang all of that content area knowledge onto that good story. Another thing that kids uh, like to hang things on is uh, catchy songs and poems. We all have songs that we remember from our childhood. Nursery rhymes are some of the first things that we sing to children. And so when you're doing a unit study for small children, you always want to include some sort of poem or music or song that they can uh, attach their knowledge to. So if you look at the screen here, you see that I have a poem that was written by Janet Bruno, and it talks about uh, spiders and the very first line is a science line. Spiderlings hatch from eggs. It's not the same kind of eggs that they may recognize as like chicken eggs, but spiders do hatch from eggs. So there's already one way to connect what they're learning with something that they might already know. Another thing that they talk about in this poem 
is each spider has eight tiny legs. So you see next to this spider poem, I wrote the big number eight, and I always like to teach children to draw a spider using the number eight. So we start with the number eight, and then we add our eight legs in the body parts, and then we can put our eyes at the front if we want. But it's just a way for them to help remember that spiders have eight legs and two body parts. Not three, like an insect, because they're not insects, they're arachnids. Another thing that I love to do with unit studies is I love to include food items. So here I have a couple of examples for you. I have some a picture here of a cupcake with a spider web on top. I have a spider web that you could build out of pretzels and drizzle white chocolate across it. Those look yummy and then make little spiders to put on top of them. How cute is that? This bottom one down here may be something uh, that may be a little bit different for some of you. You take little sections of hot dogs and you stick dried spaghetti into the hot dog. And then when you cook it, it comes out looking like spider legs hanging off the hot dog. Now, I know it's not two body parts. I understand that. And the kids will be the first ones to point that out because they've learned that spiders have two body parts. That's great. That's a great way to assess their learning. Then you can encourage them to figure out how to make it better, how to make it more anatomically correct for those spiders. Anyway, incorporating food as much as possible, getting more of those senses involved in what the children are learning, letting them do the uh, cooking with you in the kitchen is all a great way to incorporate that learning into their little sponge-like brains, which is wonderful. One thing that I love about all of this is using OneNote to store this information. Because if you're reading through a magazine or you happen to come across something or a friend sends you something and you think, wow, that's a great idea. It's so easy to go into OneNote to type in, uh, you know, to start a page for what you're going to do and drop that idea in there. You see here, when I put these spider web snacks in, I put a link to the website where this information came from. So when I'm ready to do that, I can just click on the website and go back and get the instructions. It's wonderful to be able to do that. Okay, so the other thing that's great is you can share information with others in here. It's a great way to store and organize your information and you can store the links so that you can get back to the information that you found. That's great. Now, now that I've collected some of these ideas, let me show you how I went about putting together a unit for the week that uh, me and the kids could do together. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Right here, you see our handwriting or our letter formation for the, for the week. For younger kids, we start with a finger trace and the arrows show them which way to move their fingers through the capital S and the little s. And for older kids or kids who are now ready to use a pencil, um, this particular uh, sheet right here also has the arrows to help them follow along and to create the letters correctly. Now we get down to our lesson plan. So you see, we did this lesson plan for the week of October 18th through the 22nd, many, many, many years ago. But you know what? If you were to take this same lesson plan and do it with children now, it would work just as well. So you see here that I have the calendar broken down Monday through Friday. I have the theme for each day across the top, and then I have the times that we would work on these things down the side. So for example, Monday's theme was moving on the web. Tuesday's theme was spider facts and respecting nature. Wednesday's theme was websites. And I'm not talking about the electronic kind. Thursday was creative writing and Friday was getting it all together. You see here, because the children were young at that point, preschool and kindergarten, we kept our times very short. So we had a half an hour of opening letters, handwriting, and introducing our words of the week. If you look at Monday, you can see that we did the letter S and the poem, which of course is the itsy bitsy spider. 
Our words were up and down, spider, web, and spin. We only had five, five words for them to learn. And we did the see, say, chant, write, and check uh, method for those words. Then as we move on down, uh, from 10 o'clock to 10.30, we would go into literature time. Here, we again, we would focus on that great literature, those good big picture books that kids can really get into. Um, we started here with a spiders make me feel graph because not everybody loves spiders like I do. Some people may be interested in spiders. Some people may be scared. Some people may be excited. So creating a graph about how spiders make you feel is kind of an interesting way to hit those emotional um, and social things in the beginning before you start the learning. The book that we start with was The Spinning Spiders, and you see as our activity we made spider headbands. Those spider headbands were very important because the next section was moving and grooving spider movements with our spider headbands. There's a song that goes with that, and I'll get to that in just a second. For math, we did spider eights, adding with an eight in the add end. That was for some of our older kids. The younger kids were simply counting by to eight, counting items to eight, organizing the spiders to make different groups that would add up to eight. So one person might have two spiders, one person might have six spiders. When they counted them together, they came up with eight. From 11.30 to 12, we did a special activity on Monday, spider webs and silk, which was a reading, and then we made spider drag lines. You know, like Spider-Man does. Well, maybe not exactly the way Spider-Man does, but we learned about spider drag lines and why they're important. And then for lunch that day, we made spaghetti webs with spider meatballs. <laughs> Later in the week, we had spider cupcakes, which is always fun. Anyway, every day went like that. So we would keep the same schedule. We would just have different activities during that time, different books to read during literature, different movement activities, uh, different math activities. You can see, um, and it was very easy to follow along. Going down below that, we have more details. So for example, here I have the handwriting and uh, the alphabet, so the letter of the week, how to introduce it. Here's our poem, The Itsy Bitsy Spider, which I would, you know, print out large or put on a chart or something like that for the kids to see. We would have our uh, words of the week or our wow words. Um, and there were different activities that they had to do for that. This section is something that I always... <laughs> I still continue to add to this uh, additional text. So this is additional reading things, uh, books that you might find. And I have them broken down into fiction by author and title. And then nonfiction here again, author and title. Sometimes I even went so far as to put the library codes so they would be easy for me to look up and check out. I included a DVD here, The Magic School Bus Spins a Web. You know, kids love the Magic School Bus stuff, and they're such great science learning videos. I don't mind putting that in my lineup. Then we have our poetry. Here's that poem again by Janet Bruno. The Itsy Bitsy Spider on the Move. <laughs> this one was fun. It was um, uh, allowing children the opportunity to think of different places that the spider might go. So instead of climbing up the water spout, what else could he climb up? And so an example might be the Itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the coconut tree. Along came the wind and blew him into the sea. <laughs> or maybe you have some sports fans. The Itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the baseball bat. Along came the ball and he jumped into the hat. Because <laughs> he didn't want to get hit with the ball. Anyway, movement uh, is here. Singing, the farmer in the dell. Some spiders like to crawl, some spiders like to crawl. Spider, spiders everywhere, some spiders like to crawl. And then there are other things that spiders do. They jump, they dig, they run, they swim, they spin, they pounce, they use a drag line. 
So all of those actions, when you're doing that with little kids, they can get down on the floor and crawl. They can lay on the floor and pretend like they're swimming. They can run in place. They can pretend like they're digging. All of those things, it's just fun. And all the ways that you get learning into kids' heads, it just, it works really well for them. All right, and on down and down and down. Here is a spider data. Uh, long legs. So this was a bulletin board idea that we had where we could put up spider facts as we learned about them, put a big spider in the middle and make chain, uh, paper chain legs that would go out to these various facts. Again, trying to use their hands and their, their big body parts to be able to help them learn um, all the facts that we want them to learn. Here are the spider counters that we could cut out and used for those math activities. Here are the uh, spelling words. So again, you see it's not highly organized. This is for me. This is for me, the teacher, to be able to cut and paste and print out what I need. This is not to publish. This is not to um, any, any of those kinds of things. This is simply a resource for me. So anyway, back to the top. So as you can see, this is a great way just to dump ideas and information uh, into a place and, and have it there for yourself as a resource while you're teaching those children. Or maybe you're not even a teacher. Maybe it's just your grandkids who are coming to visit for the week and you want to have a fun week planned for them. So you want to do some of the movement and music and art projects and create spiders out of hot dogs. Who knows? Anyway, when children are young, it's always an opportunity for them to learn. Every second they're learning. And so as organized as we can be and as much as we can put in front of them, the more they will learn. I have some other units studies here along the side. Um, if you look down my pages list, you see I have gathered information on ancient Egypt and Greek mythology and what life was like for Greek kids and what the muses were about what the Roman Empire was all about. And these were ideas for a middle school unit that we were planning. Anyway, I hope you've gotten some ideas to create some unit studies or some, who knows, maybe you're a camp counselor. Maybe you're a grandma who's having the kids come over for the week. Maybe you wanna do a special uh, week during the uh, school breaks when they're not in school and you just wanna have some fun things for the kids to do. All of these things can be stored in OneNote and organized in a very easy way. And then when you're ready to implement them, all you gotta do is click on that search button, type in the word spiders, and it'll bring you right back to the page uh, that you're wanting to work with. Well, that's about all I have for you today. If you've learned something new or you found value in today's video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Click that like button down below and go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to learn more about what we do here at A Crystal Clear Live. Liking and subscribing are free. There's no charge for any of it and um, it really helps other people find our channel. So thanks for joining me today and happy learning everyone. Okay, bye.